I try to implement multiple ways for students to learn, multiple um, styles of assessment that all culminate into a final grade, of course, but multiple ways for students to engage the material, multiple ways for students to give me feedback on their process. So we have things like the formal student evaluation at the end of the semester. Well, prior to that, I like to do an informal evaluation that just says two questions. What work, what's working great? What do you need me to change? I need that before you get to your final grade so I can help um, any deficiencies, so I can know what I think is awesome that may be failing you. And so students can give me their feedback in a way that is quick, it's easy, it's anonymous. Inclusivity in my classroom, I hope it feels like I want you to come, I want you to be engaged, and I'm open to who you are such that I allow students to participate in creating the syllabus. So in the first week or two, we have open conversations about what we need to learn, but not always how to learn it. And that's what I enjoy about hearing from the students. How do you want to learn it? What's best for you in setting up the Blackboard shell? And so it's a lot of work. I come into the classroom at the beginning of a semester with part of it planned, and part of it yet to be planned by the students. And giving the students control, giving them some ownership of the semester, and then crafting it around my learning objectives. So that's how I see my role, is I'm gonna keep the whole semester focused on our learning objectives, but allowing the students to reroute the class at any given time. You know, I'm the GPS, we're gonna get to the final destination. However, you know, they choose if they wanna pay the toll, if they wanna go, you know, a rest stop, they choose to reroute and making it fun in that way, um, I think is inclusivity to me. In addition, yes, I know I have visual learners, I have auditory learners, I have all types of learners. And so that's where I try to deliver and assess the material in all learning styles as much as possible. And then also giving students some flexibility in how they are assessed. Do they want to do <laughs> something oral, which they all say no, and I say, okay, well, let's make it just a smaller portion of the grade because we do need to grow in our ability to have oral communication, especially in a professional environment. And they just don't have many opportunities while they're a student. Um, and bringing that into the classroom says, hey, here's a life skill that you can practice on your way to getting your best grade in this class. And yes, on your way to learning this material also. It's absolutely scalable because what I'm doing really isn't specific to the course material. It's specific to how it's delivered, how it's assessed, how it's presented, and how it's made flexible and available to the students. And yes, there has to be some boundaries set about how flexible we can be. However, that is, uh, that's pedagogy. That's not my discipline just yet. I fit my discipline into the inclusive pedagogy. I would say they need to know CETL, and I'm not saying that as a shameless plug. When I literally walk the campus on my job interview for the position I now have, I distinctly remember walking in at that time. Uh, it wasn't called Center for Teaching and Learning. It was the Office of Teaching and Excellence. I can't remember. It was called OTEL, and it was located in the library. I distinctly remember walking by and I only saw the sign on the outside of the room and it was one of my must-haves in an institution. I needed an institution that was going to support me growing in my pedagogy, not just growing in my discipline. So what I would tell professors coming here, come hungry, come curious, come humbly because we have to be humble in knowing that we need more to be effective instructors than just our discipline. We need pedagogy and we need to respect it as an equal science, as the ex expertise we have with our terminal degrees. And I feel that many people have more of a hierarchy. They value their expertise more than they value the science of pedagogy. When we can value them equally and marry them into what we do in the classroom, teaching becomes more exciting and learning becomes more exciting. And that's why we're in the profession. You don't have that at many other institutions. And I had a yearning for it at my previous institution and they just didn't have the support staff that we have in our CEDL staff. So when I um, moved on from that institution for personal reasons, it was a phenomenal experience for me professionally. And I still have very close friends uh, that I keep in touch with. But when I moved on, that was definitely one thing that I wanted in my career. And honestly, I would say 
The genesis of it for me was being taught by amazing instructors at my alma mater, the University of Pittsburgh. And I wanted to be those amazing instructors. I wanted to inspire my students to learn as I felt I was inspired to learn as a student at the University of Pittsburgh. So I wanted to become my mentors, but I know I needed help and I need help from people that have expertise in areas that I don't. And that's what brought me here. Well, I think the big picture, the job market demands it. I think the big picture is graduating is not enough. There's still a bridge we have to cross as an institution between graduating and job readiness or graduating and uh, grad school readiness, professional school readiness. Whatever our students' next step is, they need a broader experience here than simply our graduation requirements. And I believe that's what our inclusive teaching, our inclusive pedagogy, our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives provides, at least contributes to building that bridge from where anyone can be by graduating from any school. Simply having a diploma on your resume is not enough for you to be an effective uh, professional in whatever field you choose. And that's really what we want for our students. We want them to leave here and launch into the life they always dreamed of. We don't want them to settle. Success would permeate the entire Mercy College community. I feel that success would mean everybody from staff and extended staff, administrator, faculty, student, everyone that is a friend or a family member of Mercy College would be better than they could be without Mercy College. I think success means students have options, endless options when they leave. I think success means faculty come and grow in their discipline. They also grow in their pedagogy. They grow in their collegiality. They grow in their collaborative skills. They grow in their ability to make an impact in their discipline in our college campus community, as well as their uh, professional communities. I think it means that we are successful in including everybody in our community, but also including all aspects of them because we all bring all of ourselves to campus every day. And I think our success means inclusion goes beyond belonging to building. And we're building people in the ways that are important to them, such that yes, their lives are changed for the better, no matter if they were here for a semester or a lifetime. The faculty at Mercy College and even future faculty that will hire will be top notch in their field. And they all come with a lot of pride in their expertise and in their professional accomplishments prior to Mercy College. And they all have excitement and vision about their professional accomplishments that they wish to pursue while at Mercy College. And what I would suggest is to bring that pride in what you do to Mercy and specifically to CETL so that it can be crafted into more than you ever thought it could be. And what happens is we hear about things like high impact practices. We hear about equity mindedness. We hear about inclusive pedagogy and these terms kind of swim around in our heads for a while. And sometimes we engage them like at a faculty seminar day or at a conference in our uh, specific fields or we read articles about these websites. So these things are around us. And what I would suggest is be intentional about holding space in your teaching for improving your teaching because everyone's teaching can improve and we are all professors we're all in love with our discipline which is one of the reasons why we teach but if we can't communicate that in a way that sticks to our students, that resonates with them, that they can incorporate into their prior knowledge, that they can see helping them in their future. If we can't get to their innermost parts with what we love, then our students leave our classrooms, even with excellent grades, without a love for learning and without a love for the discipline that we hoped to impart and we didn't. And we want to make sure that we don't look at the metrics of grades, even retention and graduation rates solely as our measure of success. That our measure of success means that our students are changed when they leave us and we are changed by them.
And that's what inclusive pedagogy does. It is a symbiotic relationship of growth. And it starts with acknowledging that we all can and need to grow and we all have the support that we need.